Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. With your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. This is what John the Baptist proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It happened in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. On coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came from the heavens. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, Father. Today is the last day we get to say that. The last day of the Christmas season, officially ends with the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord. And I was thinking about this this morning, and I kind of had a, a fitting end to the Christmas season this past week. I received my last Christmas gift in the mail. Uh, it was from Father Tom Metzger, uh, who was my pastor where I was in Noblesville my first three years of the priesthood before I came here. And I was really touched, you know, man, he thought to send me this Christmas present and I opened it up, and it was real nicely wrapped. I thought, man, he really put a lot of effort into this. Man, he must really care about me. You know, I had good friendship, and I started unwrapping it. I thought, I wonder if it's a, a gift card or a cigar or something like that. And I unwrapped it, and it was a picture frame. And I got even more excited. I thought, man, he knows how much I love religious artwork. And so I turned it over, and it was a picture of, of Father Tom himself. It was a portrait of Father Tom, that bald, ugly mug, <laughs> even follows me to Crawfordsville. So anyway, it was a very fitting end to the, the Christmas season. I thought it was a pretty, pretty funny gift. Uh, this morning, as we celebrate the Feast of the Baptism, I'm also reminded of a couple of years ago, I had the opportunity to go to the Holy Land. Uh, how many of you have ever actually been to the Holy Land? All right, not very many of us. We need a Maybe we'll make a trip together uh, one of these days once the pandemic uh, ends. But I remember being really struck when I went to the Holy Land. One of the striking places was going to the Jordan River where Jesus himself was baptized. And, you know, in my head, I picture this really powerful uh, river. And it turns out it's just like a little creek. A little muddy creek was where Jesus was baptized. It's kind of interesting. Now, the Feast of the Baptism probably makes you think of a couple of questions. Or at least it always made me think of a couple of questions as I was growing up in the faith. And the first question was, if baptism is for the forgiveness of sins, why was Jesus baptized? I wonder if you've thought about that question. It's for a couple of reasons, says the church. Uh, first of all, he was instituting the sacrament of baptism. He was setting an example for us. But also, uh, the church fathers had this great saying. They said that Jesus, unlike all of us, who when we are baptized, we are sanctified by the waters. Jesus was the opposite. By being baptized, he sanctified all of the waters that would be used in the sacrament of baptism in the future. So that truly, all of us, when we are baptized, even though we're not literally in the Jordan River with Jesus, spiritually, mystically, we truly take his place in the waters of baptism. And we hear the Father say over us, you are my beloved son, my beloved daughter, whom I am well pleased. Beautiful, right? Now another question you might think of with this baptism of Jesus. If Jesus was baptized when he was an adult, then why do we baptize infants? 
Right? Maybe somebody's even asked you about this. You know, why do you Catholics? Why do you baptize infants? I think it's a good idea to talk about that today. Why do we baptize infants in the Catholic Church? I can think of at least three important reasons why we baptize infants. Uh, first of all, it's because it's what the church has always done. Uh, it's what we've always done. The earliest Christians, if you read the documents of the early church fathers, it's unanimous that they believed infant baptism was a common thing to do and totally okay. Uh, it's also in the Bible. Uh, it's in uh, the book of Acts, chapter 16. Now, I know all of you guys probably have that chapter memorized. You don't need me to remind you about the story. Uh, but in Acts chapter 16, it was the beginning of St. Paul's ministry. And he was going around preaching the gospel in a lot of different cities and areas. And it turns out that many people, of course, they wanted to be saved. They wanted to be baptized. But they weren't the only ones to be baptized. Twice in Acts chapter 16, there are two different people who desire to be baptized, but not only themselves, but also their whole family and their whole household. That actually happened a lot. You can read about it in many different places in the New Testament. People are baptized with their entire household, presumably their children and their toddlers and their infants. We're all baptized with them. Right? Now, why have we always done this? Why have we always baptized infants? We baptize infants because Jesus himself said that baptism is necessary for salvation. Does anybody know where he said that? Bible trivia? John chapter 3, the Gospel of John. Jesus said, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. He cannot enter the kingdom of God without being baptized, being born of water and Spirit. That's what Jesus himself said. Now, uh, a slight side note about this. This is actually uh, significant because oftentimes you'll hear Christians say things like, well, have you been born again? Or I'm a born again Christian. And what do they mean when they say being born again? They mean that you have accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. That's what most Christians think. But it turns out in that John chapter 3, when Jesus was talking about being born again, the man he was speaking to is a man named Nicodemus. And Nicodemus said, what do you mean being born again? Should I go back into my mother's womb? And Jesus responded by saying, no, unless you are born of water and spirit, meaning baptism. Right? So if somebody asks you if you've been born again, you can say, yes, I was baptized on this day. Right? Not that confessing Jesus as your Lord and Savior is not a good thing to do. But Jesus, when he's talked about being born again, he was talking about baptism specifically. All right, so three reasons why we baptize infants. The first one we talked about, it's what Christians have always done. Second reason we talked about, because Jesus said it was necessary for salvation. Now that might bring to mind another question. Well, what happens if somebody didn't have a chance to be baptized? What about somebody who maybe had a miscarriage? What about that unborn child? What about them? Is it possible for them to be saved? It's a difficult question and kind of a personal question for many of us. Now, how many of you ever heard of the doctrine called limbo? Right, probably all of us, right? It's important to realize that the church never has actually taught limbo. Right, limbo was this idea that an unbaptized child goes to a place called a limbo, and it's not heaven and it's not hell. The church has never officially taught that. The church has also never officially condemned it. Uh, many theologians and saints have believed in this doctrine of limbo. But uh, there's a phrase in the catechism, which I think is extremely helpful, especially for those of you who maybe have had a miscarriage and you legitimately wonder about this. What the catechism says about Jesus' words is the catechism says, yes, baptism is necessary for salvation because Jesus has chosen to make it so. But Jesus himself is not bound by that. Jesus can do whatever he wants. And so we still hope for the salvation of all those who have not been baptized. And yet, we know that we should take it seriously. And so we baptize people as soon as possible. Some of you might be old enough to remember the days where even right in the hospital, sometimes uh, babies would be taken from the mother and they would be taken to the church by the godparents and they would be baptized even before the parents could be there. Right? Because it was necessary. We took it very seriously. Right? So first two reasons. That's why we've always done it. Second reason, 
because it's necessary for salvation? What's the third reason why we baptize infants? We baptize infants because according to Colossians 2, St. Paul in the New Testament, baptism has taken the place of circumcision. All right, you guys remember a few weeks ago when we were talking about the Eucharist, we were talking about how uh, we had the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, and now we have the New Covenant and the New Testament. And just as the centerpiece of the Old Covenant was the Passover sacrifice and Passover feast, so in the New Covenant, the centerpiece is the Mass, the Eucharist. Sacrifice of the Mass and the reception of the Eucharist. Likewise, in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, in the Bible, the way you were able to participate in the Passover feast is that first, you and your family had to be circumcised. You were not considered a part of God's family, a part of the covenant people, until you were circumcised. In the New Testament, thanks be to God, circumcision is not required for that. Instead, baptism takes its place. In order to be considered a member of the new covenant family of God, we must be baptized. So why would we not do that as soon as possible? In fact, in the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, young boys were circumcised when they were eight days old. Right? So we do the same with baptism, baptizing our infants as soon as possible. And praise God that we do. Because when someone is baptized, they literally become adopted son or daughter of God, a member of his family, a new creation. Original sin is removed from their soul. And they are reborn into Christ himself, into his church. It is the greatest thing that we can give to our infants. And it's something that we should celebrate year after year. I wonder, how many of you know the day that you were baptized? You celebrate it. All of us celebrate our birthdays year after year. What about the day that you were baptized? I was baptized on May 6th, 1990. Right? It's something we should celebrate. So if somebody ever asks you, you know, you Catholic, why do you baptize your infants? Jesus was an adult. In fact, they can't even make that decision for themselves. Why would you do that? Your response can be, because I want the greatest thing in the world for my child. How would you not baptize your child? 